Good morning. Today we are going to examine the binomial distribution together. A reminder of what a binomial variable consists of, well, it's characterized by certain features, which consist of, first of all, being an experiment where n identical trials take place. The result of each trial will either lead to a success or to a failure. At every trial, the probability of a success remains constant and is called p. This ensures the independence of every trial. Finally, the variable itself is or consists of the total number of successes that you will have observed over the n trials. When it comes to representing the binomial law or the binomial variable, we will say that x is a binomial variable if it follows b for binomial, n for the number of trials, and p the probability of a success at every trial. Here are examples of a binomial variable. Suppose you were to throw a, cone, a, co a coin. Yeah, don't throw a cone, that's a bad idea. If you were to throw a coin 12 times and let x represent the number of times heads was observed, then every coin toss has a result that is independent of the previous one, and the probability of a success, that is, obtaining heads, is 0.5 at every trial. So x obeys a binomial law consisting of 12 trials with 0.5 probability of success. If you were on, 12, on tw 20 different occasions to toss two dice simultaneously, and if you were to consider the number of times a sum of five was observed, then this would also be a binomial law. The sum of the two dice is independent from the result you would have gotten in a previous toss. So y in this case would be a binomial law consisting of 20 trials, and I'll let you guys verify that obtaining a sum of five does indeed have a probability of one over nine. In terms of the expected value, the variance, and the standard deviation for a binomial variable, we have formulas to guide us through them. So n times p is what we would expect is the number of successes we would observe. It could vary in, uh, when measured in variance as n times p times 1 minus p, and the standard deviation is the root of the variance. However, if we wanted to calculate the probability that a binomial variable takes on a very specific value, then we're back to counting somehow. If x is a binomial law with n trials and p probability of success, then the probability that x will take on a specific number k, so the probability that we will get k successes on n trials, is equal to n choose k. The trials can lead to k successes, but where those successes are placed can vary. n choose k is how many different ways the successes can be disposed. p to the k, so k successes with probability p, and n minus k failures with probability 1 minus p. Of course, it's much quicker to calculate the probabilities if you are given a table, if you have your calculator, or even better, if you can use Excel. In English versions of Excel, you will find a function called binomial dist, or binome dist. Here's an example. Let's assume that 30% of current Marinopolis students graduated from a public high school. Suppose 20 Marinopolis students were randomly selected with replacement from a list that was provided by the Registrar's Office. Then, from the 20 selected names, we count how many graduated from a public high school. Suppose X represents the number of students who did graduate from a public high school in our sample. Then, X is definitely a random variable 
its value could be zero just as it could be 20. There is no guarantee on the exact number of students in our list that will have graduated from a public high school. Furthermore, can we assume x follows a binomial distribution? Well, absolutely, because it has the characteristics of a binomial. There are 20 identical trials taking place, which is to select students from the list of Maranopa students. Every time we select a student, an outcome of success or failure will be observed. Either he or she graduated from a public high school or didn't. Because the names are replaced, the probability of obtaining a success remains constant at every trial. And finally, our goal is to count the number of successes over our 20 trials. How would you label x in a probability notation? Well, in this case, 20 trials with 0.3 probability. In terms of expected value and standard deviation, we've discussed the formulas that we can use. So the expected value would be 6 students out of the 20. Of course, that number can vary, and we have variance to give us an order of size of the, of the variability. But of course, standard deviation makes a bit more sense when we want to have the appropriate units. So root of 4.2 would tell us that roughly two students, more or less, from our expected number six should be observed as coming from public high schools. How likely is it that exactly eight students in our sample of 20 will come from public high schools? Well, we have access to the formula if we wanted to calculate it with a calculator, for instance. We could also refer to probability tables or just import the information, input the information into Excel. So eight successes from our 20 trials, probability of success 0.3, and cumulative will put zero because we're not adding uh, the possibilities from zero to eight, but counting specifically the probability of having eight exact successes. If the probability that we are interested in finding is to have fewer than five students in the sample that come from public high schools, then we actually have to be careful to calculate the probability of having four or less. So that would mean we would calculate the formula for the probability for values x equals zero, one, two, three, and four. Again, we could also use Excel, and this time by putting a one in the cumulative uh, window, we could accumulate the probabilities from zero all the way to four, rather than finding the probability for four specifically. 